Another extremely common challenge in tracking is dealing with objects that overlap. So I've chosen a very, very simple object, but don't worry, we'll get to more complicated ones. Let's say that we're trying to track this tree and the bike is overlapping. Well, first we could start by placing a handful of points on the tree and also this point here, which we know there's going to be a problem with because the guy is going to ride right past it. So I'll track. And of course that point gets swept off and that's a problem. So we have a new tool set to deal with this called trackable and non-trackable keyframes, which you can see with these four icons here. So light blue means it's trackable. Dark blue means it's not trackable. So what do we mean by that? It's basically a human definition. Right now we can see this point and that means because we can see it and we can find it, it's trackable. As we move along right here, we can't see that point. That little hole on the tree is not visible, therefore not trackable. And as we move along further, now we can see it again with our own eyes, meaning it's trackable. So when an object is overlapped, the first thing you can do is to find where it's trackable and where it's not. So you can select the point and we'll say, all right, so on this frame, definitely not trackable. It's created that little black rectangular outline. And you can see that from here, all frames moving forward are dark blue, meaning that it can't be tracked. Actually, I'll probably just move back one frame. I don't think it's really trackable on this frame either. It's starting to get overlapped. And if you wanted to delete this key, you could do so just by pressing this button. In the future, hopefully you'll be able to click and drag these, move them and slide them. We just haven't got there yet. So again, moving back, it's trackable here where it's light blue, not trackable here where it's dark blue. Then we're gonna move through the shot and say, okay, it's definitely trackable here. So we click that button. In order to track this, the point needs to know where it's going to be in each of these light blue trackable regions. So for example, you need to make an adjustment point here and you already have an adjustment point here. So inside each of these light blue regions, there had better be a yellow adjustment point or things will go crazy. So now when we press refine track, which is just pressing track all and having new adjustment points, you can see what happens. This point is tracking and then it knows it dies here because it's been set to not trackable. And then it's back to life here where it's been defined as trackable and tracks throughout through the rest of the shot. So how do we get to see its motion here? Well, inside of these blue gaps, the point is dead, meaning that it doesn't have any keyframes, which is also indicated by the black keyframes here. So of course, just like a point that goes off screen in the last tutorial, Dead keyframes interpolate their motion by following living keyframes. Let's turn on position scale rotation interpolation. Now you'll see this becomes dark blue and it's following along with the rest of the motion in the shot. Again, interpolating in here, we can turn on render guide point links and see that it shows these two points to follow. Also, we absolutely will have a system for choosing specific guide points. We just haven't gotten there yet. So again, just to do one more point, uh, let's just take this. If we had tracked it and we ran into issues, whatever, we can move through and say, okay, so the last frame where it's trackable might be here. We make an adjustment point. And then on the next frame, it is not trackable. And then we're gonna move forward and say, maybe if we move this here, it's trackable. Go over another couple of frames, maybe give it another adjustment point or whatever, and press track all. And now this point has been resolved. There is an easier way to do this. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you these keyframes first is because this is how you get precision. However, you can use an alpha mask, so that way anything that goes into the bad area is automatically terminated. On this shot, I've done some very crude masking and I've just created a mask over the biker. So to just quickly show you how that works, first thing you have to do is make a mask surrounding the entire shot and then make another mask here. So I'll just go, you know, kind of loosely around the bike. It's also important to give a little bit of extra space. Don't get too tight or else the points might try to follow the objects behind the mask because the mask processes after tracking. That's another thing we're going to fix later. And if you didn't understand it, that's totally okay. So create my path point here and then move this over there. Whatever, this is just a very rough mask. You could also probably track a mask on here using lockdown, but I think for simplicity of showing you the tool, 
we're just going to do that manually. I'll set this mask to subtract, and right now it's subtracting at 100%. But that's a little bit annoying because you can't actually see the shot. Lockdown interprets the alpha channel, that's anything less than 50% opacity, to be a dead zone which will terminate while tracking. So that means that if you have your mask opacity here, it just has to be above 50% and Lockdown will recognize that as an alpha mask. I'll apply Lockdown and I'll enter the popout, making these points a little larger so you can see them. And I'll place my point here. So now when I go to track right, you'll notice that, that point dies off. If we look at this point and we select it, you can see that it tracks and it has these gray keyframes indicating that there's base tracking data there and then a black keyframe there, meaning it has no further tracking data. And we need this to come back to start tracking over here. One of the easiest ways to get this back into position is to turn on interpolation. And of course, now this point, I'm just going to enable the guide point link so you can see, is it actually has its own tracking data here. And then on these next frames, it's following these two points. And that's why it's staying so close to where it's supposed to be. And that's just going to make it a little bit easier to put this into place. And what you could actually do is you could click this button to create an adjustment point, or you could just click and drag that into place, making this yellow keyframe right here. So now when we go to press track all, there is new information. We have another adjustment point. You can see that it wants to retrack this whole red area. And now if we look at this keyframe, it's been tracked and it's interpolating through this dead zone. And it's been tracked again, starting from this adjustment point, which must have tracked all the way back until it was terminated by this alpha channel dead zone. And of course, through to the end of the shot. This is a great way to track a lot of points at once. So for example, if I'm going to create a point here, actually, maybe I'll just do a few here, here, and here or whatever. I can move through and then maybe I could readjust these and I can press track all. And now those four points have been tracked and are interpolating through the gap. So in short, this alpha channel mask can be a great time saver. However, sometimes it's very nice to be able to go specifically to the frame and not really worry about where something's intersecting and just manually set where it's visible and not visible. Both of these tools can be used together. So for example, if this point here, for whatever reason, stops tracking well on this frame, then we could go ahead and set it to not trackable here and then move forward and then set it to trackable again here. And we would just have to rerun the interpolation. And now that's all set. This next part of the tutorial isn't going to include any new information on interpolation, but I just think that it might make sense to do it with a more difficult shot because this is a difficult concept and I think stepping through it again could help reinforce it. So let's say that we wanted to track this guy's face. One of the first things that I always recommend when you're tracking anything in lockdown is try to just track one point first and try to track it precisely. So what do we see on this guy's face the whole time when the ball is mostly covering it? We see his hair. So I think that this is a pretty good point here. So I'm going to start by tracking just that. But what good does this do us? If we have one point tracked, or we have two points tracked, or however many, that means that we can start using interpolation. So I'm going to go ahead and think about tracking his eyes. So just creating one point here on his eye, I'll turn on position scale rotation. As I move through the shot, this is already mostly still attached to his eye. So I'll go ahead and I'll place that point there. And if I want to do this in batch, so I'll create points there, there, there. Maybe we'll do the corners of the mouth, bottom of the lip, top of the lip. Interpolation is keeping these points relatively close to where they're supposed to be. So without using an alpha mask, I'm just going to reinforce using the trackable, not trackable keys. So moving forward, so I'm going to retoggle interpolation, which is just going to update the positions. And as we move forward, it's funny, this actually doesn't even look that bad, literally with just one keyframe actually tracked and then adjustment keys. 
However, we need to do this more precisely. So as we move forward, we can see that all these points are trackable and then the points are not trackable here. So when they're not trackable, select them, not trackable. Select, not trackable. Select these, not trackable. Select this point, not trackable. Okay, and then here is the fun part, is moving forward and now making them trackable again. Here we can see that that point is trackable. Moving forward, this one's now trackable. These two are trackable. These are, and these are. So each of these should be set with their own light blue trackable regions and dark blue non-trackable regions. They each have adjustment points in each of the light blue regions, so now when we press track all, we should be on our way to better results. Playing this back, you can see how well that worked. And of course you could repeat the last steps using an alpha mask.